Hello everybody, Garrett is here again with the next episode of the Isla Paradiso Bunch. This is episode 6 and we have the same crew as in the previous 5 episodes, plus 1 who we are going to meet early in this episode. As we begin, Stella Dog has fleas and she's trying to get somebody's attention. She needs assistance. We're saving her lifetime happiness points to buy the pet hygienator for her. That way she can keep her own fleas under control whenever she needs to. But she's got a lot more lifetime happiness points to get before she can get the pet hygienator. So we needed to buy her a bathtub. So we went into buy mode and she's got herself a brand new tub that we're putting out in the yard for her. Hopefully none of the human type sins will decide to take a bath in Stella's own private bathtub. Diana got the job to bath Stella in the bathtub and here she is trying to encourage Stella to get into the bath. I think Stella's looking forward to it now. Here she is all sudsed up. That should get rid of the fleas and then we get the hairdryer out and dry her off. Then she's out of the tub all clean and defleed. I thought it was interesting that the soap suds weren't washed off before she got the hair dryer. Now we've got Jeannie. She's about to learn some gem cuts. She's going to use the gem cutting machine, but Jeannie doesn't have very many gems in her inventory. Stella Dog happens to have four gems in her inventory, so we'll take them. She's got a diamond, a moonstone, one rainbow gem and a bloodstone, as well as a maple leaf, a snake skin, and one of three fragments of a stone hydrant. There are a few objects, little sculpture things, that the dogs find pieces of as they go digging in dog dig spots. Once they find all of the pieces of one of the sculptures, they can reconstruct it, usually inside somewhere where there's plenty of room around for people to walk around it. As you can see, we've been checking out the contents of these boxes that I've got around the place. One of them has got a couple of spare uncut gems in it. So we'll get them for Jeannie to cut, to practice gem cutting. It's a bit short on uncut gems at the moment. One thing about the um, gem cutting machine is that you can click on the machine and choose to cut a pile of gems. Now you've always been able to do that, but when we first got the gem cutting machine, if the sim had a stack of two or more of the same type of gem in their inventory, you could say to cut a stack of gems and pick that whole stack and you'd get as many gems out as were in that stack. But something's happened along the way to mean that now when you, if you click on a stack of multiple gems in the sims inventory, you'll only get one out. So if you want all of them cut, you need to actually click on each individual gem and cut them all one at a time. And when a sim cuts a gem in the gem cutting machine, they end up with the, the cut gem plus some gem dust in their inventory. There is a badge that you can get which requires you to cut one of each gem type, and that includes gem dust. So once you've done all of the new, all of the cuts of the different gem types, you um, need to also cut something into dust. As you can see, Sam's just got an opportunity to deliver three very nice letters to somebody. Unfortunately, we only have perfect letters, so he'll have to deliver three perfect letters. This is one of the good things about having gardeners. They put them all in the fridge so it's easy to find if you need to deliver some sort of harvestable somewhere. Fortunately, we don't have to send Sam out to find lettuce seeds to plant the lettuce and replant them until he can get very nice lettuce. He's already got perfect ones in the fridge. Now, I'm only going to cut a few gems here with Jeannie. She's, at the moment, she can still only cut emerald cut. There are a lot of different cuts, and they go from the cheapest to the most expensive, except for hard cut. The hard cut comes in when you've, I think when you've found all of the different gem types, actual, you know, ruby or emerald or whatever. And I don't want to cut the moonstone if I can help it, 
because a moon cut moonstone is required in one of the elixir recipes, which is a long way from being able to cut the moon cut. The second type of gem cut that she will learn is oval. And I, I think we might get to pear cut in these videos, but I'm not going to leave her there all day cutting gems for, and making you watch that. But I'm going to keep at her until she can do every single one of the different gem cuts. That love sign that's above her there, it's from one of the websites, I forget which one, and it's actually a shelf. Looks pretty small to me. I don't think I've actually put anything on it yet. Looks like that's her first oval cut gem, the ruby. Now here's Hayley. She's downstairs at the wishing well and the pixies are there. So obviously it's after 8.30 at night and before 3 a.m. Otherwise they wouldn't be there. She's in her diving gear, so I suspect she must have been kicked out of a dive cave somewhere and failed to remember to change into her everyday clothes. While Haley's been fishing in the wishing well, Judy's gone off on a date with one of the townies. If I remember his name, I'll tell you who it is. But they decided to go to the Stone's Throw greenhouse. And while there, Judy decided that it was a perfect opportunity to collect a few seeds pick a few flowers, catch a few little animals, while he sat and read something. Read a book by the look of it. Usually she will only plant the seeds that she can recognise. The others will be consigned or used for various magic tricks or other ingredients. And she picks the flowers and will sell the flowers before they lose their value because they lose their value at midnight. They, their value just decreases. The sons are dancing and playing music, so Judy decides to join them in a little dance, and then she starts picking up the sons that they're spitting out. The sons are worth a hundred simoleons each, unless they start losing their value, in which case they eventually, or very quickly, are worth nothing and just vanish. See, Judy's date has stopped reading his book, and now he's tending one of those humble harvest stands. There's a few seeds to be picked up near the carnival on the water. Now, it has a seasonal marker, and... The season has changed, the roller skating rink has gone, and now we've got the haunted house and a pumpkin patch. I think the rest of the lot is just stays as it was through all of the seasons. It's just that middle bit that I decided to add the seasonal marker. Here comes Diana. She's going to go through that haunted house over and over again until they get at least one Cacklin Macabell. You might notice me pan the camera around occasionally and you'll see it will go wiggly and wobbly sort of look like that. And that is looking at the haunted house through the swimming pool. And the swimming pool has got windows or walls. So you can watch the sims swimming around in there. There she is, she's come out of the house. But she's going to go back in again lots and lots and lots of times. That's about all that's going to happen on this lot today. Joanna had to come and pick up the seeds that I had out the front, that we saw out the front earlier, and then she's just going to also go through the haunted house over and over and over again. We want some cackling knackerbells, at least one anyway. That... Um, music machine you can see on the far right there, that big white thing with the gold speakers on top that came with the lot, the carousel lot. And it's what the music is provided with. That, they've got a Cacklin Macabell, according to that message up in the top corner of the screen. Somebody's got one in their inventory. Yeah, well, that is the music speaker that you'll see them dancing to later. It's there all of the time. It doesn't move. It's always there, even in summer, spring, autumn, winter. Now Judy's going to start going through there too by the look of it. Muriel, there she comes now. She's about to start harvesting the pumpkins. 
They spent most of the day having fun there in the haunted house or picking pumpkins or dancing. I'll just let it go for a little bit longer to see what happens to poor Diana because she gets such a terrible fright. She comes out as a ghost. No, we didn't see her as a ghost. I must have removed that bit. But here she is doing the smuscle dance. Only stay a ghost for a little while. I'm sure you've all seen it happen. Now we're all back at home again and we've got Muriel working on a wooden sculpture. She's got to deliver three wooden sculptures as one of her opportunities and I've decided it's about time she completed that opportunity. And Jeannie's going to do some more gem cutting for just a little bit. Just let you see how I handle it when I've got a stack of two or more gems that I want to cut. I actually go from the gem that I click on and choose to cut in the machine rather than click on the machine and say cut a stack of gems. So there's a few different ways you can do things and that's just what I'm trying to show you here. Let's click on the gem if you've got a pile of gems and just pick one at a time. I keep getting opportunities to go to the World Adventures Worlds and I haven't sent any of them there yet. Of course, Judy's been in previous games. I've just keep transferring her to new games. But I will have to send them there shortly. But I'd like to find all the islands first before we go off to visit China. France and Egypt. That machine looks really dangerous with its sharp bits and pointy bits that it does some things to those poor gems. But they do come out nice and sparkly. That's it. That's the edge for the gem cutting machine now. And here we've got Hayley. She's ended up back here again in her diving outfit. She must be having really bad luck when she goes diving. See, so when I'm showing you Sims doing one thing, I've got other Sims off doing other things. I'm only showing you little bits here and there. But you get in the picture of the, what's happening in the game. I'll let you see the pixies for a few seconds. And then the Sims have mostly all gone to bed by now because they're going to be busy tomorrow. There's Diana having a snooze. And Jeannie's gone down to improve her logic skill. She's playing chess with herself, learning how to play chess, I suppose. Best way to do it. And while she's there, somebody comes in and starts chatting her up. Looks like this bloke is trying his luck with all the girls, because in an earlier episode we saw him watching the stars with Muriel, and now here he is flirting with Jeannie. Every so often, it gets to a point in a game where the Sims' inventories are getting a bit too full. And this ha time has happened in this game. And I'm now going to take the time, mostly off screen, you won't see all of this, where I'm taking things out of the inventories and storing them in the various storage places. Here I'm taking fish out of Judy's inventory and putting them in the box. But that's the um, map that Judy put four map pieces together to find the island. And the name of the island that she found was Plunder Cove. You get Plunder Cove by assembling four map pieces. And when you assemble the four map pieces, not only do you get the island, but you get that map. And I've displayed it on the wall as a reminder. That is her proof that she found the island fair and square. She got her four map pieces and she made her map. If you've been watching the videos, you know that all their storage boxes have got things in them or will have more as things go and less as they need them because it means that when they get an opportunity, they can usually just go to a storage somewhere and take what they need to fulfill the opportunity and move on to the next one. At this point, Judy is going to put some of her insects away in that insect cabinet. 
And once she's put them away, we'll move on to the next part of the occurrences. As you can see, we've still got lots of elixirs. We're going to make a lot more yet too. And Judy's going to be putting them into the elixir consignment store and consigning them as well. Now, this is the exciting moment when we add a new housemate. This is a little boy called Kitty Cat. I just like the look of the stray cat when it turned up and I thought maybe I'll get a cat name if we have a cat. And I know that Judy's a witch and witches like to have cats around. So that's why I added the cat. Now it's a member of the household. They'll change its name to Kitty Cat and move on. I'm not going to be doing much with it. It'll just wander around and be a part of the household and you'll just see it here and there occasionally. I might teach it to hunt. It's a him actually. And there's the doggy gnome that just turned up. Didn't know that. I still haven't worked out how those gnomes appear. And now Jeannie's off. She's gone to the greenhouse to consign some things and she found a bird while she was there and befriended it very easily. So she's put in a pocket and then I sold it. And here she is consigning things at the humble harvest stands. When she's finished doing it at the greenhouse, she'll pick up a few more seeds and then she'll move on to Alfresco Market and also to the humble harvest stands that are at the Savvy Seller stores. And while that's happening, Hale is diving and she's met up with a mermaid. This is Mia Azul. You saw her earlier without a tail. I've taken her into Cratosim and given her a tail, but it's not working terribly well. But at least she's got a tail at the moment. I think I'll use Anres Master Controller next to remove her occult state and put it back again and hopefully that'll give her a permanent tail. There is an island you can get by having a bef by befriending a mermaid. And I'm trying to get a Harley to befriend Mia Azul. But she's not having much luck at this point. She's only an acquaintance at best at this right now. Now, Jeannie has got an opportunity to deliver the perfect harvest to this bloke, which is Alfonso Alto. She's been chasing him all over town. It's been a catching up to him thing, and then he'll jump in a taxi or a car or he'll run off and so she'll chase after him. It hasn't been going on for a while today, but here is. She's finally tracked him down and delivered the perfect harvest. And now she's going to have a talk to him. She can maybe befriend him a bit or at least improve their relationship. Things might be better between them. This is the one who, this is the sim who they hypnotized in the earlier episode at the carnival on the water. Now Hale has gone back diving again. See if she can catch some fish and maybe even fight a shark. Don't hold that much hope though. She still hasn't got a diving skill up high enough to get into those really dangerous caves. But she is improving. She's, her skill's improving all the time. I think she's going to catch a few fish here. But I can't give you too much of the diving because otherwise the video would go on for absolute hours. And what we're going to have to do is have another diving video because I've got lots of really good diving video to show you with you know lots of fish swimming around and beautiful corals and things. We're just seeing a little bit of it here. Now Alfonso has taken off and left Jenny there so she's decided to go visit one of their islands. This one is Plum Bob Island. It's the one that they got early in the piece before I even started making a video and they have actually built a little house on it that's got a basement and my tutorial that I'm going to do will show you how I made this basement and I'm starting to decorate it. The plan is to have a big tree garden on their bottom basement. As you can see this basement's not really square, we have just followed the highest points on the land for this particular top level basement. We need lots of produce to be sold at the Humble Harvest stands to be able to continue decorating and building that 
a big basement. And here we are, we've got Haley diving again, and I thought you might like to see the beautiful sunset as it gets dark. Send her out, maybe she'll catch a shark fight while it's night time. Problem is, of course, I don't think the shark fight is the last thing she has to do. So even if she does get into a shark fight, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll get to the island in this video. So here comes Haley in her speed boat or water taxi. I'm too sure what she's in at the moment. They've got a couple of boats that they own that they can often use. But I think they often go on water taxis as well. I guess it depends who's got the use of the boat at the time. Here she is, she's down on the, underneath the surface now, ready to start chasing fish and trying to find things, opening up treasure chests to see if she can find treasure. You see around the basement at home, they'll find sometimes there's a big gem. Well, the big gems that they've got at the moment all come from the um, dive chests. That's a jellyfish she's going to catch there that's swimming around at the moment. Yeah, the other way of getting the big gems is to use the Carter's display case to transform them by putting a hole, I think it's eight or six or eight gems on it, and clicking the button to transmogify, I think it is. You can get some big gems that way and other things. Looks like you can't click on it. Some of these things weren't clickable when I was playing this, but you can see it swimming around. You should be able to click on it. They're one of the ones that you're supposed to be able to catch, but it's a good close-up shot of a jellyfish. There's a few other fish down here that are like that. I tried clicking on them for ages and they just weren't clickable. very hazy down there. Maybe because it's night time and the pink of the sky is coming through to the underground, under the water. This is all still the same dive. As you can probably tell because it's got a that pinkish glow about it. That looks like a hermit crab. See that fish skeleton back there? Sometimes that one's just de is just decor, but sometimes you'll see them, and they're worth a real lot of simoleons if you find one that you can actually collect, like about a thousand simoleons or something like that, or a bit more actually. But that one's just decor, which was a pity. Most of the ones you see are just decor, but occasionally you'll get one that you can click on. It's a treasure chest. She tries to open it. Here she comes. She's going to try to open that treasure chest. I have to try and see if we can get a better look at her as she opens the treasure chest. What's she got out of it? 1,000 simoleons, a large emerald cut emerald, a large oval cut ruby, three silver, and one map piece. I don't think the map piece will be any good to her though because I think Judy's already reconstructed the map. So we'll see what happens if they get more map pieces. She can catch that fish up there. I think she can catch that one. A lot of the fish down here in this dive wasn't able to click on to get her to catch them. But she could catch a few, and she did. And this is just about the end of the video. So I do hope you've enjoyed it. I'll start working on the next one now because there was just too much to show you, to show you everything I've recorded and I think I've got enough already there to make another 
probably two or three more videos before I continue playing my game any further. We'll just see while she catches a few more fish and then returns to the surface. And then that will be it. That looks like a polyp. That's something she can catch. If she could click, I could click on it for her to catch it. That little thing floating around there, that can be caught as well. Okay, she's decided she's going up to the surface. She's not going to catch anything else. Because I didn't tell her to go up, but she went up anyway. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Carrots out. Bye-bye.